Do you also find elastic being too tight around your underwear? The great news is when you are making your underwear, you can regulate the amount of stretch of your elastic or even opt for no elastic at all. This is episode three of mini underwear series, where I'm teaching you how to design and sew made to measure knickers. Originally, it was planned as a quick, simple tutorial, but in the process of working on it, it turned into a complete mini course. And you can sign up to the full course on our website. All the lessons are available immediately after sign up, and you can come back to any of them at any time. And as a bonus, you will also get lifetime access to our free sewing course, which is usually available only for 60 days. My name is Lisa Bennett. I am co-founder of Studio Arc de Four, designer and educator, and also the founder and president of the Weird Body Club. What is it? You can check out in this video. And my biggest passion in life is helping women feeling great in their bodies through well-fitted clothing. I will teach you how to understand clothes making inside out, design and make garments that you would love to wear. We don't sell ready sewing patterns. Instead, we teach you how to make them. If you haven't seen the first two episodes of this mini-series, I strongly recommend that you start with them. In the first one, you will learn how to take your measurements and design a custom knickers pattern for yourself. And in the second, you will learn how to design and make a gusset that is comfortable for you. And today I'll show you a few ways of adding elastic to your knickers. And I am making this really ugly pair of panties using four different fabric colors to make everything really visible and easy to follow for you. And we finished last episode episode with sewing this double layered gusset. One quick thing I did off camera before getting to sew an elastic is I stitched my two layers of gusset together along the edges. Two layers of jersey don't roll inside each other and it's just much easier to attach elastic. As I mentioned before, I'll be using this elastic. It's quite stretchy, it's really nice and soft. Here comes one of the biggest problem that appeared again and again in your comments when we were asking you what you dislike about ready underwear. A very common problem is that elastic around the legs is way too tight and I agree with you and for the elastic to be tight it doesn't even need to be you know crazy crazy like this even if it's just a little bit tighter than you like it it can feel quite unpleasant very often in the garments when you add elastic you stitch it a bit stretched which then brings the rest of the garment together so the length of the elastic is shorter than the length of the garment so when you sew in it, it stretches and brings the garment in. And we will do this around the waistline because we kind of want to bring a little bit in. But when it comes to the leg holes, for me personally, the best way to attach elastic is just to have it lying flat as a beautiful trimming. So when I make underwear for myself, I don't stretch it at all around my legs. In the ready underwear, the length of the elastic will be 10-20% shorter than the length of this leg hole. To me, even 10% is too tight, so I'm going for 0%. So if you want a tighter fit, you open up your knickers and you measure the length of this curve with the tape measure on the side, on the rib, around the entire length, measure it, and whatever the measurement is, you go to your calculator and you take off 10, 20%. Also depends on how stretchy is your elastic. We will make the sneakers even uglier and I will use three different colors of elastic so you can see exactly all the steps. I will first add elastic to each of the leg holes. Let's make it green and white this way and then I'll make contrasting black on the top. It looks really bad, but I really hope it will be very clear to see what I'm doing. And here is another idea for your tests. If you're not sure how tight you would like your elastic to sit, try two different ways on each leg. And this way, by making only one test, you will have two different results and you will know what works better for you. I will just put it on top, no stretch at all. So I don't need to measure it. I just align it just like a beautiful trimming. I take my elastic, in the end it will be facing this way, but for now I take the pretty side and I face it towards my underwear and I just pin it, not stretching anything, along the entire curve. Right now I'm showing you how to add elastic without any stretch, but don't worry, we'll get to the stretching part when we're stitching elastic to the waistband. And now I go to the machine and I attach it. See, the middle of my presser foot is not quite at the edge, kind of not far off it, 
and I will start with a few manual stitches just to make sure the fabric starts moving and also when you're at the edge you can help your fabric to move by holding these threads and it's not difficult it just could be a little bit fiddly here the problems you might have is that the fabric is running away from you and elastic is on the top so you just want to make sure that you bring them all lift the presser foot and make sure that your fabric and your elastic are aligned back stitches in this case could be a little bit tricky so just leave the threads and you can always just tie the knot later if you feel that back stitch could be too complicated don't do it very slowly you continue doing this step by step in like in this little increments from one pin to another so if i see a little bit of my fabric poking just a little bit that's great this indicates that it's definitely under elastic so i continue until the very end and that's what i'm getting that's my zigzag stitches and now the idea is that from the face side i can fold it this way and i have a nice and beautiful finish for my legs to keep it in place i will put another zigzag stitch on top from the visible side to press this down and this brings the seam allowances in you can pin it if you want to or you can just go for it in this case i'll go really close to the edge so that's all i'm doing right it starts taking shape also look at the difference on the other side elastic a little bit further away so i stitch it right at the edge so there's a bit more of elastic showing up you can choose how you prefer this keep in mind when you're designing your crotch width this elastic adds to your crotch width try it on and if it's too much maybe next time you can reduce it a little bit it all comes with testing so now we have only two side seams and the top to finish first i will close one of the side seams so i go to the wrong side if you have an overlocker machine or a serger if you're in the us this is the time when you can use it but i'll stick to the zigzag one zigzag stitch over here okay so that's my side seam look at this seam allowance it's absolutely massive i don't need it i can chop it optional here you can also put another zigzag stitch on top to cover the edges but this fabric doesn't fray i don't have to do that and we also want to iron this side seam yeah so now this side seam stitched and ironed what do i have i have one continuous line the waistline of the front and the waistline of the back which makes it super simple to attach an elastic I will be having a shorter elastic because I really want it to stretch and hold it in place. And how to measure how much elastic you need? Take one of your tests that you made previously and you know exactly where this waistline sits on you. Take an elastic, put it around you. How do you like it to sit comfortably? Make sure that this is also enough for you to pass through your hips. And this is how much elastic you need. So now you can see that my elastic is a lot shorter then the line. How do I do this? Here's a basic principle. So I really need to stretch it. And this is how I do it. I just pin it on each side first. So make sure that it's the same flat side. Next, I want to find the middle of this elastic and I'm going to pin this middle to the side seam. So now it's equally spread. And now both on the back and on the front, you can find the middle of your elastic. Pin it to the middle of your front. And then you can find the middle of this piece. Pin it to the middle of this area here or you can just stretch it and quickly mark it with your fingers and then pin it yeah and you do this i think this is enough i don't need any more pins here you can add more pins if it's more comfortable for you and basically that's all i do along the entire waistline divide into halves and pin other option you just keep spreading it and keep pinning it bit by bit Now I have my continuous length and I can go to the sewing machine and stitch it together. At the very beginning here, you just stitch it together, okay? Like one centimeter, don't stretch anything. Same way we did before. Yeah, so, and once the very beginning is stitched, this will be in your seam allowance in the side seam. I'll be chopping this anyway. You go to your first pin and see we have more fabric than the elastic. 
and I go to my first spin and I stretch it and I sew it with my elastic stretched and the fabric not stretched. I can even mark a little half over here and just keep this bit stretched until I reach here and then I stretch it again. It's probably a bit more visible on the green side so I'll show you this again there. The fabric is not stretched, elastic is stretched, yeah? I'm stretching it. Okay, so as promised, here's the green part once again. The fabric is now lying flat, not gathered, and elastic is stretched. And as I'm going under my press of foot, I keep my elastic stretched and fabric just as it is. So the fabric is flat. But at all times, I'm holding the elastic so it, you know, keeps the stretch exactly how I need it. And I reach the next area and I do the same again and that's basically it. The only tricky bit here is a little bit in the end. So I'm just trying to stretch the elastic until the very end. Just be careful with your fingers. It's a bit fiddly, but it's doable. Done. See what's happening so elastic is really gathering my fabric and you could have had the same around your leg holes if you chose to i'll be doing the same story here too turning it kind of vertically stand up to show up this way and what's the best way do i do it now or after i stitch the side seam let's have a think if i do it right now so i iron it and i top stitch it and then i come to stitch my side seam it's already up and it will be fine what if i do this after i finish my side seam both of my elastics are down finish my side seams i open up and i actually can't lift it up because it's jammed so i do this before please do this exercise every time you're not sure you don't have to stitch anything you can just hold it together with your hand and you know the answer first thing i'm going to iron it and put the top stitch here then close the side seam and we'll be done I will show you just a little bit because one thing I didn't cover, yeah, what to do with the top stitch when it's all so roughly gathered because of the elastic. Same as we did before, when attaching elastic, you just stretch it and make yourself a nice flat line situation here and put the top stitch. Just do this along the entire waistline. This is my very ugly pair of underwear finally ready. See here, it's gathering a lot at the waistline. Yes, because of the way I stitched the elastic and doesn't gather at all around the legs because this is how I planned it. Here is where I close the side seam. If the elastic isn't quite aligned, you can always just help it a little bit with the couple of hand stitches. That's the basic idea. And trust me, it will look so much better when you use one color fabric, matching elastic and matching thread. And now I wanna show you a few more options, how you can finish your underwear. You can try all of them and choose what works for you or combine different ones into your perfect pair of knickers. So see here, I just turned in my seam allowance and this way there is no elastic at all and it's really simple to do. At the stage where everything is still open, you start folding in your seam allowance and because it's jersey and it stretches. It's really easy. You wouldn't be able to do this with woven fabric, but jersey is really great for this. I am not drawing my seam allowances. I have developed a very good eye measure, so I know that it's nice and even. If you need to draw, you can use disappearing markers and mark the line for the fold or just go for it. So look, when it comes to the gusset, you want to make sure that it's nice and flat. Yeah, that nothing is gathering underneath. And then you just fold both layers in. So, and now you go ahead and just put a zigzag stitch over here. So in this case, I would go for maybe slightly wider zigzag. So that's how it looks after I ironed it. And I also stitched the side seams. And now another idea, because why not? In terms of elastic, again, you can just add it on the top as we did before. And another option, if you don't want to do this thing where we um, stitch it this way, and then turned up this way. You can just stitch it on the top, but this could be a little bit tricky with the pins 
because it will be moving a lot. In this case, if you just want to put elastic on top, whether it's here or around your legs, I recommend really quick hand stitching, just the busting stitches to place it in place because with the pins, it will be moving too much. So that's another option. Or we can make a tunnel for the elastic simply by turning this top edge inside, zigzagging it and leaving a small opening to insert the elastic and doing it this way. So this way you don't have elastic touching your skin and this could be a lot softer on you. So just do this once you have stitched your both your side seams. Just make sure that this tunnel is wide enough for your elastic. And if you know that you'll be trying it this way, then you want to add a bit of extra seam allowance on top to allow for the fold. Yeah. Right. So now just one continuous zigzag stitch to close it up and I'll be leaving a little opening to insert the elastic. Um, you can also use the safety pin, but I find that paper clips are easier and they definitely don't open inside. So attach your elastic, go to the opening and just thread it in. And if you don't want it to run away, you can also pin the tail, the remaining tail. So it definitely stays in place. If I were making children's underwear, I would definitely use this way. So there is no elastic touching the super sensitive skin. Get it out. And now the task is to make sure that um, elastic is facing the same way. So it's not twisted. I want to show you how to sew elastic again with two different colors, just to make sure that you see everything, right? So when you're measuring yourself for the elastic, you of course include a bit of seam allowance, say about two centimeters, an inch. Yeah. So they can overlap. It is very fiddly. They really don't want to stay together. So what you want to do, you want to pin them very carefully. So, and they will try to move. That's okay. Now I can go not right in the beginning, but maybe in the middle and I can just start putting the zigzag stitch. Also a good idea to just put the first one manually. Yeah. So it definitely gets in. And once you have the first stitch in, you can remove your pin because now your elastic is secured by the needle and just do a few zigzag stitches. And once you reach the end of this overlap, what you can do, you can just drop the needle down, right? Lift up the presser foot, rotate your zigzag. Obviously, normally you will have your underwear attached to that, but it will be easy. And now you can go back. See, this is still not stitched. So kind of want to make sure that all the layers are flat. And instead of doing the back stitch, you just go back this way. So that's what you get. Yeah. About two centimeter overlap and just two layers of zigzag stitching is plenty and it's nice and secure. And that's what you get. It's really mild and soft fit it wouldn't be too tight. So it's really, really comfortable. How you sew it is not as important as finding the correct fit. If in the process you find the way that works even better for you, excellent. Whatever works for you is the right way. Next time I'll show you how to combine all the techniques from this three episodes and make a pair of reversible knickers. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Remember that the full underwear course is already available on our website. It comes with very handy ready to print instructions and a lifetime access to our free sewing course. This is an online on demand course. Once you sign up, all the lessons are available straight away and you can come back to them anytime. Keep practicing, keep making tests and I'll see you next week.